I never get fed up coming up the river. There's always something different, always something new. I've spent most of my life at sea, and then I've done several jobs as a lighthouse keeper, uh, worked on deep sea trawlers, coasters. I've been an auxiliary coast guard, the boatman on Lundy Island. For the last 30 years, I've been a commercial fisherman, up until just recently when I started doing the river cruises. We start off from Appledore and um, with the tide, just slowly puttering along. Because if I went quickly, I wouldn't be able to talk about all the things and the history and what's happening in the river. That was an old minesweeper, so we'd tow a wire rope along the seabed, dislodge the German mines, and then um, the sailors would fire their rifles at them. Uh, they were mostly crewed by trawlermen because the sweeping of the mines is very similar to trawling. And they're made of wood, uh, of course, to, uh, for the magnetic mines. Old London Docks Tug, it spent its last 10 years of its life in um, Falmouth Docks. I was a deck boy when I was 15, and I'll never forget that because that was going from school into the rough world of tugboats. We nearly got pulled over by a big vessel, an SO tanker, who suddenly went away at top speed, pulled us right over on our sides. Very touch and go, wherever it did turn right over, but we just managed to cut the rope before. But my friend at school, he, he did perish, a big ship did pull him over and I can picture my friend's face because he was always smiling. He had buck teeth and he was always smiling. But there you go, that's, that's the dangerous job, tugs. Trawling in the sea generally, isn't it? And there's the Oldenburg, the Lundy supply vessel. I actually worked on, on there, uh, on the refit, and uh, we took the old U-boat engines out and put uh, American engines in, funny enough, Cummins engines. Mr. Benson had a fleet of sailing ships. He was a rogue, he was a smuggler. He, he was in cahoots with a couple of MPs in London and they fiddled the contract for him to take the convicts to Australia. But um, he was cheating and dropping them off on Lundy Island and using them as slaves in the quarries to quarry the Lundy granite and um, build the nice stone walls they have there now. Biddeford was famous for a paint. They mined it in the Easter water and it was called Biddeford Black. They made mascara out of it. And when the ladies cried, um, their eyes used to run. Not anymore, but uh, I shouldn't think it was very healthy. The part I like best is when you get up to the top end of the, the river near where Gifford, where the, the trees and the, the banks come rolling in. You seem to see more wildlife up uh, this end. As the season progresses, you see the, the shell ducks and, and their chicks, and then they go, they disappear, and then something else comes along. We're, on the, we're in the shallow part of the river now. Then we need to get over the other side where it's a bit deeper. Halfpenny Bridge is a lovely little bridge. It was called Halfpenny Bridge because it cost half a penny to cross it. And the toll master lived on, on the left-hand side of the bank there in the little house. If you wanted to cross in the middle of the night, you'd have to wake him up. We go as far as we can, and then we go back with the tide. I always trawled single-handed on my own, and it's a hard job anyway, let alone being on your own, and I just realised I'm time to do something different. When I retired from trawling, I bought the old ferry boat and named it Cheeky Monkey, which is after my daughter. I've had a lot of jobs uh, connected to the sea in my life, with big trawlers and uh, coasters and tugs, uh, lifeboats, um, but I think the, the best of all is this little boat, Cheeky Monkey. I've had more pleasure on this vessel than any other one.
And that's always a lot lighter and a lot easier to pull in when you've got a fish. It's very, very hard and heavy when there's nothing. <laughs> it's not really hard, but sometimes it's... Depends on the size like, of the tide. Yeah. When the sun's shining, things always seem a lot nicer. Yes, we've been salmon fishing together, you know, 32 or 3 years. And she still pulls the net in there like she did when she was, when she was only 60. <laughs> you must be joking. It's a two mile walk, a mile out roughly and a mile back. Don't forget we're old, old, old age pensioners. Oh, better take changing room could you have than this. I can get the old bird dressed here. This is why it, it's a family job, pulling their trousers up. I'm 77 and everybody says why we're so fit, we eat so much fish. I'm 84 nearly now and a lot of people 84 are thinking about not, not pulling nets and rowing boats. <laughs> We've got Conniger, Pillsmouth, Deadman, the salmon will be holding in the, in the deep water, you know, maybe another week or two. So I'm hoping now for the fish that's going through, find they can't get out, and they'll come back down through on this draft. So that's why I choose this today. I may be unlucky. I may have done better up there. The net is secured on the beach. With, it, with the crew member, which in my case is Sheila. Okay, now, if she's, on, if on, she's doing her job properly. Right, steady, dear, not too quick. Which she does most not of the quick. time. I was fishing Conniger many years ago, and the wind was blowing me towards the rocks. I was stuck fast, and in the minute and you're stuck fast, the bottom of the boat goes down, and the water comes in over and, and, and sinks you, you see. I never had a knife to cut the net adrift. So all I had to do was just get an armful of net and throw it all out in the great heap and then make a bolt for the shore as fast as I could and leave it there until the tide come in. <laughs> the funny thing about it, people would have said, of course, Steve Taylor, he got drone shooting Conniger and he's done it a million times, whatever was he thinking about? But it was so simple. Just a split second and the wind, gone. The net itself is the same net. The idea is to, to form a circle from the shore and come back into the same shore again. And then you both walk into the center and you start pulling again, head, core, and a foot rope until it gradually gets smaller and smaller and smaller until if there's anything in the net, it's there. What do you think, Ann Taylor? <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> oh, thanks. Looks like a lovely mullet. No, oh, it's a flat Oh, it's a flat fish. Back for another day. You're going to put all this back in again now. Eh? They can never understand in the village of Bronton why a farmer never makes any money and the salmon fishermen never catch any salmon. Uh, years ago I caught 300. But that's the many, many tides ago that was. And in those days, my uncle and I fished in a, in a, in a boat. We never had enough money to buy a pair of chest waders. So he always fished in his mother's skirt. He wore his skirt and bare feet when it was frosty. Because fishing used to start the 1st of uh, April first then. 1st of April then, you see. Yeah. Only, only eight weeks now. Or just June and July. And it, it, they've taken away the best months from us, you see. But there were 36 netsmen catching salmon on this river. But now there's only three licenses left, and we're the last three remaining. That's myself and my son. And the other one was a Mr. Cox in Appledore. If all three of us went on a bus trip and we were killed, there would be no more netting in the tow and towage ever again. But last year they made an amendment that meant there would always be one net on this river when we all die. I refuse the money just to have this way of life. See the mullets everywhere. I know. Just imagine that was fish. We won't be having salmon for supper tonight. <laughs> There's some in here. Here's, here's the salmon. Keep them coming. Here he is. Oh, lovely salmon. There's a lovely salmon. Come Look at that. that. Hold on to him, dear. He be gone. Ah, you've got a smile out of me. <laughs> nice heavy fish. But when I leave this world, I'm going to be placed to rest at Henton Church, right in the sun, with a good view of the estuary. Well, then I, I can watch who's catching the fish. I could talk to the salmon and tell them to go around the net if it's opposition. Come on, Stephen! All right, dear, I'm coming. We didn't know he was there till we got in. Oh, you were asleep. Far too good for the working class. <laughs>